This episode of the Bite That Podcast is supported by Audible. Get yourself a 30-day free trial plus an audiobook of your choosing by going to audibletrial.com slash bite that. Welcome to the 200th episode of the Bite That Weekly Wrestling Podcast. We did it, guys. This is a Woo-hoo. milestone episode. This is the spot where we're going to be talking about Raw Smackdown Live, the controversy surrounding Money in the Bank, but above everything else, this is truly a historic episode because in 200 episodes, we got we to gotta give a shout out to the community. We got to talk about the great things that have worked in Bite That the things that haven't maybe been all that great because truly this is a community supported show. So if you do want to support us, you can drop a review on Apple Podcasts, on Stitcher, on YouTube. You can comment and subscribe. You can also become a supporter on Patreon. So patreon.com slash by that. You can get a bunch of perks and a bunch of things that we're going to announce very, very soon. Just a couple of seconds off. Go to by that.com for all the other information my name is Juan Velas. I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. And for this historical episode, we got Ryan McNulty from Boston, Massachusetts. And we got Keith Poshik from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. We changed nothing. The three guys are still here. We're alive, guys. Yeah. Guys, 200 are. episodes. It's like, 200, I need to man. feel that energy. We did, Keith, we did it. cry. Cry for me, Keith. Cry. I'm constantly crying on the inside. So I've, uh, I've hit that quota by a mile but holy holy guacamole right 200 of these it's qu- it's been quite huh. the ride it's been wild and i just i changed rooms in my apartment part of the reason i couldn't do the uh, money in the bank review and my whole body hurts still it was basically constant you know all day sunday i was moving stuff but i got my setup now for and i'm happy to do 200 Better microphone. We made it. You actually, you and I actually have the the same microphone set up now. Well, Ryan, you can use my body to keep you alive. Thank you, Edge. Yeah. Yes, but guys, we're going to be talking about it, a lot of things. But as I mentioned on Twitter by that cast, we're not going to do the raw thing. We're not going to do like Kurt Angle, where he keeps you for three hours just waiting to see who kicked Enzo More's ass. And we talked about a big announcement. We actually have more than one announcement, but we're going to be lumping up all of the announcements, not in five minutes. We're going to do them right now. So the big thing right now, let's let's get the hype train going. You know, bite that. We've done 200 episodes, right? Like, let's remember that when we first did the podcast, it was strictly only on iTunes, right? Like the idea was that people will listen to us on the road, which many people have. I mean, we got we got a freaking question from a person in Chile, which is incredible. Right. So the bike club truly is international. Mind blowing. Yeah. And then eventually we launched the YouTube channel, but the YouTube channel was just going to be only for clips. So, you know, just to support the podcast, just so we could promote it. And then every now and then we said, well, let's do a couple of reviews. But we got to a point where iTunes, Stitcher and the YouTube channel became parallel. Right. So we tried to sort of appease uh, to all the different crowds, make sure that people liked us. And then we added Twitch streams which we then sort of took back, right? But what did you guys think about those times that we've we've just been able to hang out with people? It's been I mean, great. it's good. It, you know, great to always have that kind of interaction. Um, sometimes you don't quite, you know, it's a little bit more delayed on things like Twitter and stuff. So, uh, you know, doing that live stream on Twitch was always fun because that's immediate interaction. And I mean, this sounds super cliche, but at the end of the day, we do it for all y'all listening right now. We we do it for the peoples. The and, people. Uh, we did it for the people. Yeah, not, actually, not for the rock. Uh, no. No, we're not going to run anybody over. Okay, so but I do not anything for the rock. I can't afford a limousine, guys. So I'm not going to run anybody over. But uh, what's cool is that I did a Money in the Bank review this past weekend. And I did that live because one of our Patreon supporters, uh, Joe Windingland, shout out to you, man. He actually just tweeted, like, why don't you do it live? Why don't you just do the review live and you can get your feedback? And that's exactly what I did. And I'll be honest, I had a blast, right? You know, to be able to talk with people, to be able to, a lot of times in the podcast, they'll say, hey, you know, get involved in the conversation, send us a tweet, send us an email, but you get it in that spot. So what we're here to announce is that beginning 
episode 201. That is next week. By that is officially going to be a live wrestling podcast on YouTube. So you will not have to wait until we're done recording and editing. The same way that we've been doing the Raw and Uncut for patrons for almost a year, you know, for for many, many months. We've uh, tightened that up a little bit because we realized, you know, like the the best part of YouTube is to be able to get that live interaction. Uh, What that means is that anybody that's listening on Apple Podcasts and everywhere else, you're going to get the podcast the way you always will. So like that, that in no way changes. But you do have a bit of incentive if you want to hang out with us on YouTube you want to get a, a chat going where people can just talk about what we're talking about. You know, if you disagree w- about what we're saying, you don't have to wait for the podcast to end. You can actually just call us out on the spot. So, guys, we're going live. Two yes, one in live. The, uh, live. In the wise words of William O'Reilly, effort. We'll do it live. Yeah, this is uh, very exciting. So Bite That, in many ways, will also become a visual experience for those who want to uh, tune in on YouTube and you can hang out in the chat. Uh, It's going to be awesome. I I think this is an important step for us. You know, uh, know, getting to 200 was kind of, you know, establishing ourselves as a podcast. And now it's time to take it to the next level. So 200 in a lot of ways is sort of it's a celebration of how we got here and sort of the final podcast as it as it traditionally was and now we're going to go to the live experience while still having of course the audio experience for everyone on the road. And one of the thing, one of the things that I've been reading a lot, you know, when we got comments and emails, you know, especially on the road to 200, I've, we've gotten a lot of people saying like thank you just thanking us for for being able to do this as long as we have and uh i'll see tweets about you know i i just like to hang out with you guys like uh another patreon supporter liam vincent he'll say like hey i'm listening to you with uh you know a family member by my side and the live atmosphere i think that it's actually going to make the podcast better because if something goes wrong perfect if something naturally is awesome or stupid or dumb or outrageous it's part of it. So even though you're on, you're still on the road and downloading the MP3s or an Apple podcast or something, the podcast is going to be better because of it. So that's one of the announcements, but we're not exactly done. But before we move on, I would like to state for the record that I wanted to, because I know somebody out there is thinking this right now. I wanted to start going live on episode 205 so we could do 205 live. But, but we decided it was 201 idea, was better. <laughs> but we figured 200 is this, you know, monumental podcast. And then, hey, you know, that's celebrating the, you know, the first 200 episodes. Now 201, we immediately want to do sort of this new live bite that. But uh, as a cute man, I like to do cute things. But, Keith, but I'm sure you can understand. Episode 205, we'll spend some time talking about 205 yeah. live. It, it seems right. Keith, yeah. think about and this. We're on the road for that to 205 joke. Live. Prepared for that joke to be just right beaten into the ground <laughs> come that episode. Oh, that's what we do naturally. You, d- you don't really need yeah. to teach us to do that. So, guys, uh, the other thing that we're going to be talking about is that we actually just surpassed our second Patreon goal. And initially, the goal was that we were going to be launching a secondary podcast feed. We actually scrapped that as a whole, and we were going to do it anyway because... We don't want to be one of those uh, groups or people. We don't want to be Dixie Carter. We don't want to be the Dixie Carters of podcasting where we talk about big announcements and then stall and then stall and stall. So instead of waiting very, very soon, uh, maybe end of July, beginning of August, we're going to be launching Bite That Plus. So, you know, we've always been talking about debate that, the square roundtables, just reviews, uh, the podcast reviews, as a matter of fact, that is now all going to be available for people on Apple Podcasts and most podcast apps. So, you know, this feed, if you're listening to us on the road, it's going to stay the exact same. You're not going to get all this messy thing going on. But if you like what we do and you want to get a little bit more, just uh, subscribe to Byte That Plus. So in the next couple of weeks, we will definitely let you know when that feed is active. uh, So you're going to be getting podcast reviews and, and a lot of stuff that we're already doing, but not everybody is getting access to it. So more Keith. More Ryan, more Juan. Juan. Yeah, and more is better. I mean, it's just a, it's another way for you guys out there to consume contents. Like if you've never, uh, 
if you're just a listener to uh, the podcast and I've never really checked out the YouTube channel, now this is a way for you to listen to the other things we do, like our pay-per-view reviews that we mention, um, the discussion videos that we do, when, the debate that's where we'll talk about the different eras in wrestling or whatever topic that may be. It's a, it's a new way for you guys to check out the things we do, and uh, I'm really excited for it. Yes, and those who are maybe doing what I do sometimes where – you want to listen to something that's on YouTube, it uses up a lot of data on your phone. Hey, bite that plus. Now you can get the pay-per-view review in audio form. Not wa- not waste all that data. Wait, there's almost like a, a, a thing here. Bite that plus. You use less. Holy crap. That sounded way better in my head. Like halfway yeah, that through saying that. Yeah. That does not Ooh, sound like... You really, you really should have ran that by us before you said that yeah. out loud. <laughs> so can we go to the wrestling talk then and see if I can... If I can sort yeah. of make up for it. This is yes. this is still a semi somewhat maybe podcast about professional wrestling. It International is, it is. professional wrestling podcast, I should say. Yeah, so we're not done with the celebration. We're gonna have a lot of games. Like we're we're gonna lump up the bite that experience. If you're a long time bite that listener, stay tuned. There's some good stuff and some some really bad stuff coming up. But you know, this past weekend we did have uh, money in the bank, which happened, and that pay per view, unlike Extreme Rules, got people talking. In all kinds of ways. So we can talk about the women's money in the bank match and all that controversy. You know, we found out, uh, thanks to SmackDown Live, that next week we're going to be getting a rematch of the money in the bank ladder match. You know, a lot of people are speculating, hey, WWE, you know, feminist movement, they went back on this and now they're doing the rematch. Personally, I think that was part of the plan the whole time and they're just playing with us. Like, I think that is... That is what's happening. Uh, we also had Jinder Mahal retain the championship. We also have the Usos retain via countout. And, you know, we got ourselves a Mr. Money in the Bank and Baron Corbin. So outside of this whole pay-per-view overall, what was the most surprising thing for you guys or the thing you enjoyed most? The thing I enjoyed most by a mile was the women's Money in the Bank match and mostly the conclusion of it. I... I marked out when that happened and I am all for it. I don't, uh, this whole controversy thing kind of went above me because I was part hoping that that's, uh, that's what would happen. And, uh, it's great as far as I'm concerned, but for the rest of the pay per view, like it just kind of happened. There is nothing really special about the, uh, the money in the bank pay per view. It was just a very middle of the road. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good pay per view. There was, uh, nothing really stood out beyond that. Uh, that amazing, amazing, amazing decision in the uh, opening match. Yeah, so I didn't get to watch as much of Money in the Bank as I wanted to because, like I said earlier, I was moving. Um, so I was kind of going up and down stairs, checking out what was going on. I did get to see the main event in full, which was uh, an excellent Money in the Bank match. So I think that was definitely the highlight of the show. And also, I did just find it hilarious that James Ellsworth was the one who grabbed the women's briefcase, and that will forever go down in history as the uh, the first winner of the women's Money in the Bank match is James Ellsworth grabbing the briefcase and handing it to a woman. It's like, you make all this progress with the women's movement and you do this. I think that's kind of funny, and it's a great way to piss people off, and it completely worked. And now... They're going to kind of win in all ways because they're getting people talking and now they'll probably get a huge ratings boost on SmackDown by having this ladder match again on regular TV. Poor crowd, though. Notice how that crowd on SmackDown was, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, yeah, next week. They thought they were going to get it right away. <laughs> yeah, poor Dana Bryan coming back right off the bat doing that. But yeah, talking a little bit more about that, I, I was initially not a big fan of it because I do think it's one thing to help Carmella win, but James Ellsworth flat out won the match, right? Like he's the one that grabbed the briefcase. It wasn't like he helped, uh, you know, lift Carmella up and grab the uh, briefcase. So I thought that was a little controversial. But once I looked at on on tweet uh, Twitter on Twitter and all the responses and immediately WWE being aware of it, I became a fan because it's like. They took a big risk. You know, we talk about WWE playing it safe and not doing enough crazy stuff. Here's WWE saying, hey, you want heels? I'm going to give you heels. And then people complain, whoa, 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 scale it back a little bit. What's going on here? You're ruining this historic moment. But it, what is the modern day heel? I mean, that that's basically that's the, the, stuff the initial you have conversation. To do. You yep. have to You're not- have a man 
grab the first woman's money in the bank and you have to take a jobber like Jinder Mahal and make him champion. That This is the new meta for pissing people off and having true <laughs> heels. Yeah, I mean, they're bad guys. You're not supposed to like bad guys. And if this is what they need to do to make that happen, it's totally okay. And plus, if you look at it, the Money in the Bank matches, like when there used to be two Money in the Bank matches uh, on a pay-per-view, they they felt very similar, especially when it came to outcome. Like, oh, hey, here's the person grabbing the briefcase. Cool. I guess they're going to be champions sometime. This creates a situation where it's not just, oh, hey, here's a man that grabbed the briefcase. Now here's a woman. That exact same feeling that they used to have. You can differentiate the two Money in the Bank matches very much so because of how uh, how the outcome was and it creates this like it it creates a way that there can be two money in the bank matches and them not feel exactly the same and i'm i like that i like that a lot yeah and we got like a long-term thing and a short-term thing because carmella man that that promo that she cut on smackdown live and talking smack and everything with dana bryan she was she completely believable up, she brought up history as part of her argument you know, what WWE loves their history, it's but they never like to use past examples to actually support their argument for something. So, yeah, I thought Carmella was excellent. And I just love that. I love when you actually try and use history to your advantage to prove a point. And I thought that was really cool. So I was actually kind of sad to see that they did actually take it away from her. And I really hope she just wins it again. That would be awesome. I do love the contrast. Think about Bailey. Remember when we all wanted Bailey to relinquish the championship and she said she's not doing it? That was not beneficial for her. But then look at Carmella. Like Carmella brought up, brought up everything, but then what did she say? I don't care. I got the briefcase. Like Bailey and Carmella almost in parallel did the heel move because it's like the traditional baby face would have just given that up and said, "No, I can win it back." And that's why that didn't work for Bailey. But in contrast, that works so well for Carmella. Like to this point, Carmella to me was like, cool. She was an NXT with Enzo and Cass and all that. But now, man, like in one episode, in one SmackDown Live episode, she climbed up the ranks really, really quickly. Now, quick comment about this. Baron Corbin, Mr. Money in the Bank. Uh, We were talking a little bit about Sami Zayn possibly becoming the uh, briefcase holder. But we did have some kind of possibility about Baron Corbin, right? So now that that did happen the way that it did conclude, do you guys, uh, are you looking forward to his road as Mr. Money in the Bank? Well, obviously, Corbin's got a more traditional road with the Money in the Bank. He just seems like the right person who's that guy who is on the cusp of main event status but isn't quite there yet, and it's a heel, so... The whole sneak thing, you know, sneaking up and being opportunistic about it will definitely work. I I like it so far, so uh, I'm definitely cool with it. Uh, I have a good feeling he'll eventually become champion. I don't think he's going to be the guy that's going to lose. I think that's that's only a select few people. So, so far, so good. Yeah, uh, Corbin was my second pick, uh, Nakamura being my first, and I love the fact that he's uh, he's Mr. in the Money in the Bank. I'd like to see him keep it for a while and not just immediately cash in, maybe sneak attack down the road. Probably not on Jinder Mahal, because that would make me sad, but... Corbin, it seems like a good fit for Corbin because he's the guy that we looked at earlier this year and thought to ourselves, he has to be champion one day. So now this gives him that stamp of, yes, he is going to be champion one day. It's just a matter of when. True. Now, sort of going back quickly to the woman's one. Ryan, you sent out a tweet when uh, Carmella got the briefcase taken away from her. You stated that you want her to win it again. I agree 100%. I think that if you if you really want to build a heel woman in 2017, just have her win it back. Like say like you know what you took away Ellsworth from me, but I kind of no, get no, the no, feeling no, no. that that's not going to happen. James Ellsworth needs to win this match again. <laughs> if talking smack holds true, Daniel Bryan actually banned him from ringside. Yeah, I I don't He'll know find if a way. that is officially confirmed but daniel bryan did say it sometimes he kind of just does whatever he wants on that so 
we don't know how true that is. I still think she's just going to win it anyway. I would be really disappointed if anyone else won it because it was it was already a great fit for the the short amount of TV time she had it. Yeah, even though he might be banned from ringside officially, I still wouldn't be shocked to see James Ellsworth Ellsworth he buys show a ticket up. or something in the front exactly. row. He finds some way to influence the match. I'm kind of leaning towards Becky Lynch. I think that the promo that she cut on SmackDown Live, she was very heartfelt about it. I don't think it's nearly as fun. But at the same time, if you, if you look at history, unless it's guys like RVD and Cena with like a briefcase and all that stuff, like C- uh, Cena won that from uh, Sandow, I believe it was. Like We've never really seen like this baby face hold the briefcase and people not get bored of it, right? Like, uh, Dean O'Brien evolved because of the briefcase. He went from a good guy to a bad guy, right? So, do you guys see an outcome where maybe Becky Lynch evolves her character because of this? Maybe becoming jealous and all that? Because I really don't think... I'm hoping I'm wrong, but I'm really thinking that WWE won't double dip with Carmella, and then they're just going to go the babyface route because Baron Corbin's already another Money in the Bank holder right now. Hmm. That's a tough one because I think... I think the woman's cash in will happen soon. No matter how that money in the bank, uh, the money in the bank match goes, I don't think we'll have a very long briefcase holding because of Baron Corbin, because I think Corbin's going to have it for the long run. So with that, you immediately think that uh, one of the heels is going to win it because of the champion Naomi. So unless they did something uh, like that with Becky Lynch, which I wouldn't be opposed to, because that does seem like something that... uh, That could work, something along the lines of, oh, um, Becky's so used to being backstabbed and now she has to like extra watch her back because she's got this briefcase. That could be something that totally works, but I don't know if they will go that route. I think they'll just take the uh, take somebody that's already an established bad woman and in somebody like Carmella or maybe even Natalia and uh, just give them the briefcase. Yeah, it it seems like this Becky thing should culminate in in something different like more of a character change than just actually finally getting that win you know she's I, been I the be same character ever since she got called up like she's yeah. becky lynch and you like her so, yeah, she's so become is the next almost, thing she'll start hiding yeah. in the rafters but so is almost every woman that's been called up from NXT with like the exception of Charlotte and Carmella. Like Sasha Banks is just kind of Sasha Banks and you like her for it. Bailey's kind of Bailey. Dana Brooks, yeah, she's just kind of there. But they're uh, they're all just kind of themselves. Dana Brooks just has a smudge of makeup on her face. I don't know. They, she needs to fix <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. No, D- Dana Brooks is definitely the toughest spot of all of this, but... Uh, Now, folks, we're going to get to the Raw and SmackDown polls. Remember, every single week, go to Twitter. After Raw and SmackDown, you can let us know what you guys thought about the show, guys and gals. So, really happy about this. Raw actually got a three out of four in the polls, guys. 36%. The majority. People dug Raw. And uh, followed by a 25% of two out of four. So, hey, you know, you can't win them all, but... Wasn't too bad. Uh, Go to SmackDown, 50%. So the exact middle, right there in the middle of it, three out of four, uh, followed by 19% to two out of four. So we saw that both shows were solid this week. I will say, and I think that we can all sort of understand why, Raw was way more eventful than SmackDown Live was this week. I think both shows were good, but... And I, and I think this is a, a sad thing. I don't know I don't know if this happened to you guys or anybody listening, but halfway during Raw, I actually thought to myself, am I enjoying this episode? I actually <laughs> had to like ask myself, am I getting enjoyment out of this? Because I was. I mean, think of how... This, this is where you, you need you to stop okay? and think. Are you running yeah. a fever, Juan? No, I stop think and so. think I about think the so. fact that this is the 200th time we've sat down and talked about that show. Yeah, <laughs> and you're man. thinking thoughts like that. It only took that long. But just think about this. This is the beauty of wrestling, right? What better way to make a return uh, for a guy than, you know, for a guy that uh, 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 moved over an ambulance than by the ambulance going in reverse? And I was thinking... They are not going to have Braun Strowman cut out, come out of an ambulance. Oh, and they did. They are. Oh, they it did. is so good. He just freaking yells and goes out. And then we got the Miz and then obviously the Enzo and Cass story, which there's some 
continuity issues that Ryan will get to in a couple of seconds, but <laughs> things happen. And like we got a little bit of we got Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas to becoming relevant superstars. That Bo doesn't Dallas happen every week. Multiple segments on Raw. And he looks like Bray Wyatt. Relevant now. relevant is a strong word. Can Lackey we- Lower lackey at best. Can we at least for, say, say he's definitely looking more, more whitey? Can I say more whitey? Because he, when I saw him, I'm like, that sounds is weird. He more menacing. Up? He looks more he looks like, like he would brother. belong in the white no, family. Except yeah. now he joins another group. The opposite. So that's group. not going to happen. From but things Hollywood happened. to that, things happened on Monday Night Raw, and I think that's all we ever asked for is some sort of progression. And we got multiple things of progression. So yeah, the Miz's entourage, when when he kind of was hinting towards it the week before, I was like, yes, this is exactly what I want to see happen with the Miz because he's kind of been missing something on Raw and having a stable that he can lead. He just seems like the perfect person to lead a stable. And the entourage name is a kind of douchey enough thing for the Miz to lead. Plus, you got it, it just, Dallas it goes it's hand perfect in hand. for the Miz. It's it's really is perfect for the Miz with the whole Hollywood thing. My uh, the my first initial thought was that hey, I hope this doesn't mean Maurice is taking a step back because yep. of those two uh, of those two outcomes, I would much rather see the Miz and Maurice than the Miz with his lackeys because it could easily turn into something like hey it can turn very like classic have somebody to fight your battles for you heel type work and I really hope that doesn't happen with the way that the Miz has been killing it uh killing it recently and I don't know Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel whatever so what you're saying cool, I guess I, let, let me just clarify what you're saying is you don't like it when a champion has two lackeys that are going to interfere during his matches to make sure he he maintains his championship status when inevitably the Miz becomes champion. Is that is that what you're saying, Keith? Huh. I guess that's what I'm saying. Because I like I don't know if you guys <laughs> saw this. There was a rumor that what happened was that I guess Maurice is being taken off TV because we got Maria and Mike Canellis. My goodness, that theme song. It's so good. It's the greatest it's so damn good but because we got maria and mike canellis involved they took out the couple but then everybody's going like but wait isn't jinder hall and the Singh brothers just basically this like aren't you i'm, just I'm having- sorry oh okay i thought you meant maria put, put and mike canellis for a yeah, second yeah. i'm like wait yeah, because you have two, <laughs> two heel couples that love each other yeah. i guess you can't have too much love so they got rid of some of the love it will well, i think you. The entourage could be something a little more different because right now the Singh brothers are essentially what J and J security was to Seth Rollins, where they're just getting beat up and they're not really kind of standing on their own. Whereas Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel could actually become more than just lackeys. I know it seems kind of laughable at this point, but then again, Jinder Mahal is champion right now, so anything's possible. That's why they're in this. You know, they might seem like, oh, they haven't done anything with these guys in forever. But this is how you build them. This is how you give them credibility. This is where it starts. And I really like this because I I think both Bo Dallas, first of all, especially Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel have a lot of potential and they just have not been used. That's a that's a very good point, because as hesitant as I am about it, it is the WWE using all of its superstars and not just let's throw the same guys on Raw every single week. You're creating new uh, opportunities for these guys lower on the card. And, you know, that's 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 not a bad thing at the end of the day. It might not work out at the end of the day, but giving that opportunity is good in its own right. If you notice, the theme that WWE had this week, and I think that happens every every now and then, where SmackDown and, SmackDown and Raw both try to go for realism. Like, think back to everything Carmella said, and then that backstage segment with The Miz. Miz basically called out Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. I mean, he wasn't even being a heel. He was being an asshole for really... He was just being honest. Yeah, for being honest. <laughs> so it's crazy how, you know, we sort of go back to the very beginning of this conversation on this episode, modern day heels, like... The only way that you can get somebody to boost somebody is to basically take the lower card and try to move them up. 
because I think that all of us have this, you know, this predetermined scenario where Curtis Axel is never going to be anything. Bo Dallas is never going to be anything. Jinder Mahal is never going to be anything. So when they push him up, people go, no, don't push that guy. Give AJ the championship. He's such a good heel. Aren't you cheering AJ? Aren't you cheering Kevin Owens? Like, doesn't that defeat the purpose of a heel? So seriously, WWE, keep doing this. Like, I I miss booing people. And I, I, I booed James Ellsworth. I booed Carmella. So Did nice you, to be able. I, I loved it. <laughs> yeah, initially, I cheered. Initially, uh, you know, initially I booed it. Like that was the the legitimate reaction that I had. Then I then I overanalyzed it. You know, and then I was like, ah, oh, cool story, bro. But yeah, I mean, I I enjoyed that, but there was a part of me that that was like, oh, they kind of ruined it, didn't they? So the, it did still irk me in a way, even though I did find it hilarious. So it worked. That's what they got to do. It's. You push undercard guys to levels that the crowd and audience doesn't think deserve it. And you take something that people think is going to be awesome and you find a way to ruin it. It's true. It's sometimes you ruining things. Much, but no. Yeah. no. In, used very sparingly, ruining something can be a good thing if it leads to something better. If that's like, if that's your exclamation point and you just ruined it. Like ruining probably a streak. bad thing. Yeah. Kind of kind of like ruining the streak. But yeah, we I'm I think what it comes down to is I'm OK with it because we spent a very long time in the uh, in the recent history making history. <laughs> so if they want to take one thing and like ruin it for the sake of something better, it's OK, because we've been making history in the WWE for the last Jesus knows how long at True. this point. So then going to another big thing that happened on Raw, probably the biggest. So do we want to first talk about uh, Reigns or do we want to go to Enzo and Cass? Let's go to Reigns. Okay. Yeah, let's go to Reigns. So let's go to Reigns. Hey, Reigns, how you doing? He's the number one contender, guys. Like, just comes out this week. We had this conversation last week about how Roman Reigns just inserts himself into things, right? Like, we get the veto packages, we get everything. I will say it's a little interesting how he comes out, just says, hey, summer slams around the corner. Just going to just, just gonna go for the championship because that's what uh, I it's do. It's what happens when you uh, beat The Undertaker. You get that kind of sway and just like, hey, I'm just going to play my I beat The Undertaker card in attack mode. And now I'm in the main event of SummerSlam. Now, before going further, before going further. Taking the, the, the smarkiness, the Internet rumors out of this, like. What what in the most casual sense do you make of this? I think that as a TV show, it's just difficult when you're killing yourself to establish other people. But then this guy and this is not blind Roman Reigns hate. I just think it's questionable how they just have him go out there and say, hey, you know, talk down Joe, who just so happens to be the number one contender and you're the good guy. And then just go to whoever wins that match. Like, aren't you demoralizing the entire thing? I don't think so because uh, I think it's very uh, similar to Biker Undertaker, especially with the whole this is my yard comparison. Like Roman Reigns is establishing this thing where he basically runs the place. What he says goes. And if he says that he's going to be in the main event of SummerSlam, well, that means he's in the main event of SummerSlam. And that's all right from that, because at the end of the day, and this isn't going to happen immediately, and we're going to go to a point where we're not fans of it at all. But somebody's going to come around and beat Roman Reigns much similar in the similar way that he did to The Undertaker, where they basically kick him out of his yard and that's how they build the next guy see i mean if they're going for a if this is another one of these next level heel things then i guess it makes sense because people are already kind of iffy on reigns and then you have him come out and just he demands a title shot at a major pay-per-view way ahead of time before a title match is even settled i feel like that's designed to piss people off and i think it's working but the thing is, he's coming in like he's John Cena, because John Cena has done things like that, where he just kind of comes back and is like, oh, I'm going to challenge the champion. But Cena didn't start doing that until he was way, way more established and a multi-time champion. And this is, it It just doesn't, even though 
Reigns beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. He just lost at the most recent pay-per-view. Didn't earn, you know, his his shot. So now he's just going to come out and demand another title shot. He just fought in a five-way match to become a number one contender. And when he loses, he just comes out and and asks to be number one contender at a bigger pay-per-view. Why is he even fighting in matches? I don't know. I mean, but that's also something that they can address closer to SummerSlam. Like but Kurt they Angle, won't. Can, they won't address. They probably it. won't. No. But there's room for for them to uh, to do so. Don't Kurt give Angle them that can room, come out. Keith, they're not going to actually sleep in it. I guess so. I mean, it's a pretty comfy room, so they're really missing out. They don't they do don't. the Airbnb thing, man. They just go five star hotel. <laughs> that was. I I don't know where we're going with that, but ultimately, well, thanks for dethr- or, de- <laughs> or what you call it, derailing my point. That's what I do, man. That's what I do. But overall, it's just it's just the Roman Reigns thing. It definitely just feels like there's John Cena, there's Roman Reigns, and then there's the entire roster. Now the big question is, you know, first of all, we were we had an excellent match on Raw between Samoa Joe and Roman Reigns. I think that match, like, if that's an indication or a preview of what we could get, you know, at a pay per view, be it SummerSlam, be it whatever, like sign me up. But then the question is, based on this, can we just discard Samoa Joe as becoming the champion? I don't think people were really talking about that, but I mean, Let's Jinder Mahal is the honest. champion. Yeah, but Randy Orton is not Brock Lesnar. I think that's where the difference is. I think it doesn't take away too much because before any of this happened, we were all discarding Samoa Joe as becoming champion. Like, way, way before Roman Reigns made this announcement, you knew that Samoa Joe probably wasn't going to win at Great Balls of Fire. So how does that take away from it in any way? I don't know. But the thing is, so Joe obviously has a chance, for sure. But either way, as much as I didn't like the way they went about making Roman Reigns auto number one contender at SummerSlam, if this means that we just get the Brock versus Roman thing done at SummerSlam, fine. You can have it because I'm all for that. If you want to do Brock versus Roman at SummerSlam and let that be the match, then please, because we don't want to do this... uh, you know, holds the universal title scene hostage until WrestleMania. I don't think anybody wants that. But then they could also be, this is the first of three matches with the final, you know, they do a Goldberg Brock thing almost where there's multiple matches and the final one is at Mania. I just want it to be one and done. And if this is the way to get there, fine. I'm willing to sacrifice creative stories for us to just get this over with. Yeah, August is a lot closer than next April, so I'll take these two. It all goes back to old Yeller. Just just get it done, folks. Get it done, whether uh, it's painful for us or not. Speaking of getting it done and whether it's painful for, other, for us or not, Enzo and Cass, holy crap. Like, props to Doty for this. You know, the, the past couple of weeks, I think it was inevitably going to be obvious that it was Kaz, right, who who beat down Enzo. Like, the fact that WWE was openly calling out Kaz, you know, we got Corey Graves involved. It seemed like they, they purposely had the revival sort of take a step back and then insert a big show just to, you know, have some more possibilities as to who beat down Kaz and Enzo. And then inevitably, like that's what happened, right? It was confirmed at the conclusion of Raw. We'll get to the camera footage in a second. Let's actually talk about the good things, right? I think the camera footage, we can sort of move that back a little bit. But the reveal, man, the way that they did it, and holy crap, Enzo, Enzo Amore, uh, we we got some tweets, somebody referencing us like back to like, remember when he went into the hotel room with Lana and then Rusev and then he got his ass kicked? Like his acting was top notch there. And the whole thing here as well, like he, the man shed a tear and like that one tear, the fact that the camera got that close up at that moment just sold it because think about these two guys, like these two guys went up in NXT, like they've been the NXT thing like ever since like Big Cass debuted in a dark segment with Enzo Mori and John Cena in NXT so he's never had in a career where Enzo hasn't been involved except the time where he got his leg broken like think about that like that's got to be it's got to be painful to like basically tell to your best friend in your face hey you're worthless even though much like everything else we've been talking about 
the man wasn't lying, right? Enzo Mori gets his ass kicked. They've yet to win a championship. Everybody's been saying, like, he's holding Kaz back ring-wise, and then he got a boot to the face. What do you guys think make, make of this awesome segment that concluded Raw? Very awesome segment. I want to know how the follow-through happens because you'd think that this leads to an Enzo and Cass feud, but that doesn't seem like a thing that's not totally lopsided whatsoever. And then where does... Because with Cass now being a heel, where does he fit in everything? And I think that's the uh, I think that's the biggest question going forward. Like, how does Cass be a big guy on a show that Braun Strowman exists on? Well, the thing so is, where does he? They need fit? heels. I mean, we talked before how they're you know we have you know Ambrose Rollins, you know all the Shield is babyface right now, plus Finn Balor. So there's a lot of room, I think, for to have other heels, especially because Brock Lesnar, the champion, is away a lot. There is definitely room on a three-hour show for Cass. I uh, yeah, unbelievable promo. Cass, I mean, we make fun of his promos a lot. Man, did he step up and just blow everybody's expectations out of the water. It was, you know, we all knew this breakup was gonna happen eventually, and it was way better than I ever could have imagined. I was thoroughly impressed with both of these guys. I mean, I think what lopsided or not, this is a money feud. Maybe they make it no disqualification or something, ha- have some sort of equalizer for Enzo, because I, I still want to see this match happen. And it really just, it emotionally reached a lot of people because everyone kind of felt what Cass was saying but at the same time you just really felt bad for Enzo because even though he's this annoying small guy he's kind of got that heart of gold that just draws you in and for Cass to just be so cruel and then just kick him down like it, it hurt it, it it was really really well done 2017 has not been kind to friendships and wrestling at not all. at all <laughs> yeah no Oh, but it's so good. I feel like I got to kick one of you two just to just to one up them. No, I'm not going to actually How are you do doing? it. I'm not going to kick you, Keith. Not yet. But um, ultimately, what do you guys make of Corey Graves in this? Because I, I think it was, he was unnecessary. It was cool to see him get involved, right? Like, I think Corey Graves... If it, if he wasn't, you know, like permanently better getting out of action... security footage than Kurt Angle, the yeah, GM right? of the show. Right. But... Are they going to involve him in other things? Like, if I were Big Cass, I'd be pissed off at him, right? Because he is the whole reason that this was revealed. But then Corey Graves is retired, so he can't physically get involved like Dan Bryan. Do we get to see a managerial role? Because it feels like he, he can't just come back to the, the announce table, right? Like, not after weeks upon weeks of building up. Because that could have been anybody. Like, that role could be could have been given to, like, just a random wrestler but I'm backstage. I'm still confused. Is the Kurt Angle, Corey Graves thing a part of this? Like, is that finished now? Like, to me, or it is feels that like separate? that. I feel like it's separate. Like, this was just a, hey, I've... Here, plot convenience. I'm Corey Graves and I'm plot convenience in this case. And that's what it was for me. This whole like talking to Kurt behind closed doors or like whispering secrets. I feel like that's a different thing. And maybe they just pretend like this cast thing never happened. It's kind of just a little mesh together. Exactly. Which would not be bad because they don't really use that, right? Like two characters that are actually in different storylines. I think that we're asking for too much, but hopefully, like, I would love it if next week we just get one more phone call for Corey Graves, no context, but just letting you know, hey, this is not over. Like, Corey Graves is a stooge, Corey Graves is something, but the problem is, it'll go back to the authority. It all goes back to the authority, whether we like it or not. Now, can I riff on the security footage now? Go for it, Please do. Okay. (laughs) Really? I mean, you couldn't even look at your own footage to just recreate a little bit more. It doesn't have to be exact. I don't know why they didn't just film it the same time they did the attack with, um, you know, Cass in the first place. 
But even even then, if you forgot to do it then, could you at least just put the beam over yourself? That large freaking beam. That was like the signature part of your attack. You couldn't just put the beam over yourself to make it look slightly closer to the footage. I mean, that was just... I immediately recognized it, and it's just hilarious that one of our most liked tweets it, we've ever gotten is just me calling out WWE's BS, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised by that. Just try a little harder. Next time, I, I, it took me one second on Google to find an image to be like, I knew that wasn't right. Oh my God, I think Ryan's helping out Corey bad. Graves. I think, are you involved in this, Ryan? I don't know, but maybe, maybe, maybe Corey Graves blackmailed Big Cass into making that footage, which is why it isn't accurate. And somebody else actually did. My attack God. Enzo. It's just Corey Graves has something on Big Cass, guys. And, and then this, he this has a bigger Enzo in the man. face to it's go bigger with than all it. of us. It's true. Hashtag conspiracy. Get our get our truth on the case. The tinfoil hats are coming back. Oh, <laughs> they boy. took a long break, but I guess we're here. Uh, so, uh, folks, episode 200, we talked about some really, really big things that are happening. We're a primarily WD focused podcast, but if you recall a couple Bye. of weeks ago, we said that Keith, the Keith Poshik, bite that's Keith Poshik, would talk Me. about not WWE. That is right. Yeah. For episode 200, True. this is this is huge. Keith is about to talk about lucha underground now whether whether you've watched lucha underground in the past or not you know here's your shot so keith do it you know you've watched uh, lucha underground season one correct yes i am not all of season one i'm about three quarters of the way through season one because holy crap there's a lot more U- lucha underground than i thought there was season one's like 40 episodes it's a lot that is a lot of It's long really season. good. It's really good wrestling. Lucha Underground is it's exactly what I want out of the WWE and I wish that they did more and uh there are things that I don't like which I'll get to but I really like the style of uh that Lucha Underground presents itself in where it's all about the characters and then the wrestling is just really good to go along with it. I uh watching it it made me wish I was like 14, 15 years old again because it would have been the biggest thing in my life. I feel I think like that every you day. Can, but then you yeah. realize you're in high school again and you feel bad. Yeah, and then there's a lot of darkness around that. But it, <laughs> I feel like there's almost a direct lineage to like that starts at ECW and then goes to like Impact on Fox and then ends up in Lucha Underground because it's that – you know it's not number one, and it's probably never going to be number one, but it's that really great wrestling alternative that almost to a fault kind of has that uh, that edge to it. Like, yeah, wrestling, this isn't that mainstream crap. We're the best wrestling on the planet. And uh, yeah, ugh, wrestling. But And Lucha Underground leans into that real hard, sometimes a little too hard. but Especially Vampiro. Uh, Oh man, okay. The th- if I had to do one giant critique about Lucha Underground, and Juan has told me it gets better, so I will put or I will say this with that, knowing that. But I cannot stand the commentary team for their own separate reasons. I think Matt Stryker and Vampiro in Lucha Underground are the worst. Mostly Vampiro. I cannot handle. You know how I said like. Oh, wrestling. I'm 14. I'm going to say some edgy stuff about wrestling. That's basically Vampiro's commentary style. But at the end of your sentence, you say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but. And then say something out there, a little out there. Or he'll say, like, shit just because <laughs> I said it on television. That's what uh, that's what Vampiro feels like at the commentary desk. And uh, Matt Stryker is better, but I feel like from what I've seen that um, he puts history a little too much forward in uh, in Lucha Underground, where he uh, he'll take 
away from a story just to uh, just to bring out a historical fact. The big one that really stood out to me was uh, with the man named Cage, which, by the way, my favorite wrestler in Lucha Underground. So oh, good. My Talk favorite to me about those matches. Lucha. How do you like the the feel of the matches? They're very different. You know, a lot of people talk about the indie style of wrestling. Do you feel like Lucha Underground offers something different? It definitely leans into the indie style of wrestling with the big moves and stuff, but it's it's a spot fest when it needs to be. It's not that all the time. Like it feels it does slow down in parts, and I think that goes a very long way. And all of the uh, all of the matches do have stories in them, which I think is the uh, the biggest differentiator, whether it be in the moves itself or the characters. Because boy, does Lucha Underground hit characters perfectly. Because uh, even if the match does become a spot fest, you have these characters, and you know why they're going all out in these matches because you have that backstory to uh, to go along with it. So that's. It's like a sweet, sweet middle ground between indies and the WWE, and they uh, they've they've carved out a really good spot for themselves. That's awesome, and Lucha Underground is available on Netflix, right? So, like you right now, season one and two you can watch on Netflix, yeah. which is where I am watching it. And if you haven't checked it out, Ryan, I uh, give it a watch someday because it's a uh, it's worth I'll it. get there. Mm-hmm. Some of the uh, my favorite the my favorite lucha luchadors yeah luchadors that I would that uh, at this time I would say are uh, the man named Cage number one by a mile he is so good uh, I'm a big fan of Big Rick I've basically got a Vince McMahon thing going on with Lucha Underground where I like all the big guys That's, uh, Zeke Ezekiel Jackson yeah right. e- Ezekiel Jackson Big Rick oh okay he leaves. Mm-hmm. So no. don't get too married oh. to him. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That makes Lucha sense. Lucha goes through a lot of changes because of the contractual stuff. Like you'll see Alberto Del Rio, Rey Mysterio. Yeah. There's a lot of stars in there. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I dropped and off. It's really, but, uh, if, if you want to talk about like women's revolution, sexy star in that show. Right. She is. She is, does some crazy things. Yeah. How was that contrast? For those that don't know much about Lucha Underground, they don't have a women's division. The women are just part of the show. So, like, later on, uh, we get uh, 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 Eva Lise taking on Emil Muertes, who is the champion at one point, right? So, Oh, my God. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is a match that happens. And the crowd oh is totally God. into it. I know that's a bit of a By spoiler the way, for some, but eh, it's not that big yeah. of a spoiler. That casket match between Mil Muertes and Phoenix that happened. I know they didn't call it a casket match, but... Why did that not get more press? Because that was that's some brutal shit that happened in that match. What it I love, was real good. What I love to do with uh, both of you guys and maybe a couple of the patrons or something is I haven't watched the Ultima Lucha. Like that's basically the WrestleMania. So it's like two to three weeks yeah. to do special shows. And for whatever reason, I just never really got around to that. So maybe we can just like watch that and talk about that at some point. Because I do think that because the fact because of the fact that Lucha Underground is on Netflix. I mean, you get exposure that most other platforms won't get you, right? Because you're just like, spe- it's like the network, except there's not a lot of wrestling on Netflix. So naturally, it's just going to stick out at some point. But are you interested in checking more of it out? Like, do you feel oh, the absolutely. need to watch more? I will I will see it through. I'm uh, I'm enjoying it enough that I uh, I will watch Lucha Underground to uh, to its completion. Awesome. Awesome. So, folks. The bite that celebrations are not are not over yet. We got oh. wait. This is happening, folks. Right now, we just got a special message from Jeff, the Jeff. That's right, the man that Ryan and I hung out with because Keith was AFK in uh, WrestleMania weekend. <laughs> we hung out with Jeff, and we had to reach out. You know, we wanted to know what he thought about bite that to hundred the milestone. So here's Jeff with his bite that celebration message hey everyone this is bite that co-host of the year jeff and i've got a special message for keith keith while you sit there i hope as comfortable as possible actually i have just one thing that i would like to get off my chest what's up with the guy that does tweet of the week not even Uh having his own twitter i mean i'm a part-timer i'm basically the brock lesnar of the bite that podcast and i have a better twitter presence than you Follow me at Bite That Jeff, by the way. I'm going to leave you with a simple haiku. Canadian Keith, 
Why don't you have a Twitter? Stupid idiot. Don't forget to vote for me for co-host of the year, by the way. Jeff out. Jeff, Jeff is a man of many, many messages. But wait a minute. We don't even do Tweet of the Week anymore. Yeah. So first of all, Jeff, I am quite comfortable. So thank you for saying that. And uh, I could respond to you and call you a filthy part-timer. But instead of that, I'd like to focus on a few words you just said. And that's Tweet of the Week. Remember that? Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Oh my god, tweet of the week. That's right, folks. We're bringing it out of the barn. We talked about old Yeller. Well, old Yeller's got a little life left in so it what still. What time is it, Keith? It's time for It's Money. Money. Oh, right, right, right. It's time. <laughs> get your it's quarters. Been that long. It's... Get your dimes. Because it's money shot time. It's Tweet of the Week time. So this week's Tweet of the Week is a two parter. It's so nice. So nice. We had to do it twice. So nice. And our Tweets of the Week come from. NKBE1324 and Liam V at Lemmy is God. Not exactly a tweet, but more of like a, and I'm stealing this from another podcast, more of like a kiss on the cheek. Liam V says, or asks, <laughs> to, uh, to give his boy a shout out. Happy birthday. His boy Thomas. Turned one. Why are you last talking week. so slow? I'm I'm just <laughs> kind of soaking in the moment, figuring out my words. So Thomas, Thomas turned one last week. So can we give him a give him a happy birthday? Happy birthday, happy Thomas! Happy birthday, birthday, Thomas! Tom. Kiss on the cheek to Thomas and Mister Nick Morris, NKBE one three two four. His birthday's today on episode two hundred. He's our he's our it was meant he's to our be two hundred our two hundred baby boy. Gets a kiss on the cheek. Mwah. Mwah. And that's been this week's, and probably the last. Tweet of the week! Tweet of the week! That was beautiful, Keith. Um, I missed that. I missed the torture that was Tweet of the Week. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, we're... We're putting that one behind the bar. Yeah. <laughs> I was tr- I was trying to hit you into your catchphrase. <laughs> I, was I like, forgot, oh, about, I forgot, forgot about my catchphrase. Keith had this smile, and I was like, "Yes, he remembers it." No, he doesn't. No, yeah. he doesn't. No, I don't. It's money it's been, shot it's been too long. But now, Get folks, uh, the celebrations are ca- are going to continue, and I want to give a huge shout out to a great uh, friend of Bite That True Prince of Pro. True Prince of Pro has been a supporter since almost the very beginning of the podcast. And back in episode 100, he actually did a a game special for all of us, where basically uh, he looked up some quotes that we said at some point, and we had to sort of guess, like, what would, uh, who said what, right? And he actually did that for episode 200, so 100 episodes later. That is insane. Like, that feels like ages ago. And here we go. So episode 200. Here we are again. Thank you. Thank you so much for this true prince of bro, by the way. Spe- special kiss on the cheek for you. Keith's giving a lot of kisses today. Yeah. Now I need to stop that or else I'm going to get podcast copyright infringement. So we're never yeah. going to give a kiss on the cheek again. Tread, tread lightly, man. No, no, no <laughs> too much kissing, please. But yeah, yeah, so what's going to happen is that I'm going to pull up one of the quotes. I haven't read any. I love he, he sent me a, a document that is a picture of Matt Stryker that says no cheating Juan. So I didn't cheat, man. I didn't cheat. <laughs> So first up, let's see here. Uh, quote number one. One of us said this at some point. He will inform us afterwards. It reads, there are three things that are guaranteed in life. Death, taxes, and John Cena winning his 16th WWE championship. That's Ryan. That is Ryan. That's Ryan. That has to you be th- Ryan. Really? I actually yep. say that is Keith 100%. Really? Okay. So Yes. 
Let's see here. The answer is... <laughs> he actually put a picture of the natural born thriller. Seriously, don't look yet. <laughs> okay, you can look now. Uh, Ryan! And no! episode 101, Ryan had to drop some truth on the rest of the gang when Keith and Juan were scared that John Cena would beat Seth Rollins at SummerSlam 2015. Oh, man. <laughs> Ryan, wow. are we, uh... we know you better than you know yourself. Apparently so. Okay, so uh, second here. We have, I think this feud needs one more thing and one thing only, and that's a bullet to end it. That's Keith. Yeah, that that's got to be, be Keith. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think either of us would go that violent. Yeah. If there's violence, Keith has got to be involved in it. So the answer is, wait, it's in another page. Keith, yes. Yay. Yeah. Episode 111. Keith was asked, I'm still getting over two of the week. Uh, Keith was asked <laughs> to give his opinion on the greatest feud ever Dolph Ziggler and Lana versus Rusev and Summer Ray. Yeah, Holy I would crap. have said that. I would have said that. That was almost 100 episodes. That well, was you did. 111. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How does that feel? Almost 100 episodes ago. Wow. Hello, yeah. darkness, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Number three. It was really. <laughs> yes. It was really. It was really a great showing for Chad and Gable. This is actually oh. a trick question. Uh, people, that was Ryan. Yeah. That had to be Ryan. Oh, God. Because I'm trying to... I don't think... Did the Chad and Gable thing happen on a podcast or an SRT? <laughs> that so was a I'll podcast. Go my, I'll go I know myself when it as well because I feel like Keith originally said it not on the podcast but on another video. I, I can... I think I can answer this one. It was on a year-end award. The last bitey. Oh, wow. Oh, right. So let's find out. I'm I'm going with Ryan as well. And the answer is... Keith! You wow. said it. You said it, Keith. I know. I was yeah. being sarcastic oh. when... Because a lot of people attributed that to Ryan. But... Uh, Don't you two sound the same? That's what we're doing. We're told. the same person. Yeah, I mean, 200 episodes in. Turns out it's, a, it's always been a two-man show. Uh, Keith in episode one, two, three, and the Bitey Awards for 2015. Keith was trying to run down the choices for the 2015 Show of the Year category. He forgot. I like Gable. how he says trying, trying <laughs> yeah. to, because that is very accurate. I mean, based on Twitter of the Week, I think that's pretty accurate. He forgot Jason Jordan's good. name, so he blamed his mistake on Jason Jordan having a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> wow. By the way, Keith. I, I still stick to that. He has. By the way, Keith, Jason Jordan is a great name. No, it's not. Poor guy. Number four. But this, but this kid has made me so happy. WWE actually tweeted out a video of that, and I downloaded it. That is 100% one. Won. Yeah, that has to be. Yeah, I can identify who that is. So Keith and uh, I hate kids. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and who who downloads video anymore? It's 2017. I'm just and I'm, probably 2016 at this point. I'm just afraid that I downloaded a video of a kid. <laughs> Could watch <laughs> FBI might be knocking on your door. <laughs> yes, it was me in episode 128. So there was this kid in that bullet. Uh, so there was this kid that was in Bullet Club gear on Raw that was gyrating, right? Oh, that kid was amazing. I did download that. Oh, he was so awesome. I want to be like that kid. Number five. Yes, just have naked Tommy Dreaver give him a Kenzo stick. Kendo stick, I guess. I mean, <laughs> it's just Kenzo st stick. Does Kenzo <laughs> Suzuki have his own stick now? <laughs> well, Don't answer that. <laughs> nope, we're rolling right past that. <laughs> oh, never that was mind. one. That ha that was Juan. I'll, I'll say Juan as well. It's Naked Tommy Dreamer, so it's got to be me. And the answer is Keith. What? what? Keith really? in episode 135. You guys were talking about the hardcore legends that were giving Dean Ambrose weapons to fight Brock Lesnar. And Keith took it a little <laughs> too sexual. Why did I say that? You probably <laughs> Where did. Well, and now I'm wondering, did I like, did I say Kenzo Stick? And men can do stick? Well, I'll have to go back and listen. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the next one here. Number six. Now I'm just hungry. I want chicken wings. It uh, seems like one. 
I don't know. I'm going to go with me on that one. Yeah, because I don't like chicken wings, so that can't be me. I'm going to go... I don't know you well enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> know what I eat. I'm going to go with Keith as well. I want to know the context to this one. And the answer is, Ryan, the answer is what? you. I you, don't know Ryan. myself at all. <laughs> We're going to need some kind of intervention, Keith, because this is happening far too often now. Who am I? Yeah. What am Episode I doing here? Episode 147, while discussing the Darren Young and Bob Backlund segments, Keith said he wanted D. Young to start using the cross-faced chicken wing. <laughs> that made Ryan hungry. That that just okay. that sounds sure. accurate. Yeah. I remember none of that, so it must have happened. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. Big E climbs up on Kofi Kingston when he gets scared, and then Xavier Woods is Fred. What? What? <laughs> what? Oh, it's a Scooby Doo reference. Oh, okay. So I'm assuming that was around the time that movie came out. Yeah. I'm going to say one on that one. I'll just go with one. I'm just going to go yeah. with Ryan because it feels like whenever we go Juan, it tends to be Ryan now. Please let it be Ryan. Please let it be <laughs> Ryan. Damn it. It's me. It's me. Yes. Episode I know it wasn't me because I never saw the Scooby-Doo yeah. movie. Episode 150. On this episode, you guys were discussing upcoming New Day versus White family match at White's compound. Ugh, that, oh, uh, yeah. That happened. Remember that? Juan wanted this match to become a Scooby-Doo movie. Yep. That sounds like me. Keith asked if Braun Strowman would be Velma. Juan got really <laughs> excited about Braun in a skirt. Um, I'm going to gonna go to the next one okay i'm just gonna that's a good idea yeah. only 13.93 but i need the candies man <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see uh, okay that would be me because i'm assuming this is pokemon go yes that sounds oh, okay. right okay yeah all right i'm going this with is your the snorlax this is the snorlax oh wait okay let's see let's see let's see ryan Episode 157, on this episode, Ryan decided to leave the podcast to go catch a Snorlax, but it was, but was it really worth it, Ryan? Okay, looking back, to this day, people will bring that up every now and then. Was it worth it? Oh, 100%. I mean, we wouldn't have this as a question if it wasn't for that. <laughs> I still can't I, believe did that. You, did you ever <laughs> catch them all? Did I ever catch them all? I caught... Every available one in the U.S. on the original generation, I haven't caught up with the newer stuff, but there's some cool updates coming out this summer, so yeah. I might get back into it again. All right. If you did that, then I'm going to I'm gonna agree with you. It was worth it in the end. I still can't believe that just happened. The way that he just... It was it was such a desperate reaction of like, hey, guys, I'll be right back. I got I to gotta go catch a Snorlax. I got to go listen to that again. We're professionals around here. Of course. Number nine, there would be a lot of fluids flying around. Huh. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to go with Keith on this one just because it's messed up and we talked about Keith being sexual. I'm actually going to say myself. I'm, I'm the sexual. Okay. I'm going to go with Juan on that one. Whoa. So we are all over the place with this one. All right. One of us getting it right. It is me. Okay. Uh, Juan, episode, I'm the sexual one. Episode yeah. 158. I don't really yeah. understand how this came about. Juan said porn stash Jericho is the best. And he te and if he teamed with Joey Ryan. Oh my God. The fluids would be flying. <laughs> Juan what has the some really wrong with you? weird thoughts. Guys. <laughs> What are we doing? <laughs> like, why? What? What are we bringing to the world? Did I really say that? <laughs> Even for me, uh, that's a lot. Holy crap! Wow. Um, I I'm learning about me. See, we, what? What? Are, why? Why are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? It just seems like I love how we're surprised by Ryan and me, but then nobody's surprised about the way Keith reacts to anything. No. Love you, Keith. Uh, number ten. I'm I, a, I'm I'm a pretty open book. Yeah. I think from being nothing to being something is a huge breakout. Okay, that is definitely Ugh. me talking about James Ellsworth and the breakout superstar thing for the year-end awards. 
I will never forget that 45 <laughs> minutes of my life. So it is absolutely Ryan. If you're a new listener, please, like, don't you don't have to listen to all of the Bitey Awards. Look at the breakout star of the year. Go to the YouTube channel, type Bite that breakout star of the year. It'll probably come up. Holy crap. That That's probably one of the rare occasions where Ryan and Keith were legit fighting, not even arguing, almost fighting verbally. And then I was there in the middle like, do I want to say something or just see this go through? <laughs> so uh, who it's is good it? good times. Oh, see yeah. you in December. <laughs> so the answer is Mr. McNulty. Episode 175, the 2016 Body Awards breakout star of the year was quite the heated debate. Ryan was 1,000% right. Ellsworth was the true breakout star of the year. No, he wasn't. Thinking it's... about this now, I mean, look at all look at all the stuff that Ellsworth has done, technically. Right? You feel good about that? He's the breakout star, duh. It's not like Johnny Ainsworth. And Ainsworth's I'll never do that again. It still yeah. is. Um, here we go. Number 11. He gives that O face. That was Ryan or me. That was not Keith. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that was get, me yeah. or you. No, I'm, I'm going to say one. I'm actually going to say myself because I feel like I remember saying that. I'm going to say, I'm going to say you. I'm going to say I, you. You know what? I, I, and I'm even going to go a step further. It was Kevin Owens when he power bombed somebody. Maybe Jericho. Let's find out. Or John Cena? It was Ryan. Okay. Knew it. Ryan, episode 182. Ryan said this while discussing the Festival of Friendship. The O phase that is being discussed was Kevin Owens powerbombing Chris Jericho on the apron. Wow, man. You, you get more like see, Kevin I went from not on you. knowing like, nothing about myself to getting really good at this pretty quick. Look at the big brain on you, man. Yeah, this is exactly how the play that's go. I got the first few right now. I haven't gotten one right <laughs> yeah, in like you five months. This is, this is uh, our game shows all over again. <laughs> So we got 15 of these. These have been awesome so far. Uh, number yeah, thank you again, True Prince of Pro. Yeah, man. Uh, number 12. They were <laughs> they were laying next to each other in a picture. I think they've made up since then. <laughs> I have no idea wow. what this is about. I'm going to say Ryan. Yeah, I'm going to say pretty straight me. lace. I'm going to say this is one of those things that Ryan doesn't realize how wrong that sounds. Until after he says it. So I'm going to go with Ryan as well. And the answer is me. I what? said this. Okay. Uh, but Ryan was no, I, I need to know this context. Episode 187. So not too long ago. Ryan was perplexed by the idea of Finn Balor helping Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. This was oh. Ron's response. <laughs> oh, holy crap. That was. Man, time goes by quickly when you're doing this show. That felt like that just happened. <laughs> this is Ryan. Uh, number 14, I'm a filthy casual. That's Ryan. That's Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> and you're definitely a filthy casual. Let's see here. Uh, number. Wait, that was what number? Was there any context? Was that like NXT or something? Oh, wait. Oh, I skipped one. Uh, so I'll just take a look at that one. Filthy Cash number 14. The answer is, whoa, whoa. That was Jeff. That was Jeff. Whoa. Oh, Swerved. Facebook Swerved. Live number 11. Uh, during the Facebook Live where Ryan gives his WrestleMania predictions and Keith walks away immediately not caring about Ryan's <laughs> predictions. <laughs> <laughs> I did do that. Yeah. Oh wait, Facebook Live. No, we numbered the Facebook Lives. Uh, it, it probably did. automatically numbers them or something. Oh, okay. Jeff, Here's a secret, Jeff, Ryan, Ryan. It's not because I didn't care about your opinion. It's because I had to poop. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I appreciate the swerve throwing Jeff in there. I mean, yeah. he is co-host of the year. That yeah. was uh, Jeff was asked his opinion on a match, and this was his response. Now, let's go back to number 13. I skip one. And number 13 is a piece of cake. Who eats a piece of cake? Have the whole freaking pancake at that point. That is me. That is 100% one. Yeah. yeah, that is you. And I'm pretty sure I said it. Nobody almost else the would say something way. so absurd. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What? Keith. Keith said that. What? Juan Wait, mentioned w about pancakes. <laughs> Juan mentioned having a a trip to Abyss's house for a piece of pancake, and Keith got very offended. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 
Well, because a pancake, it was probably talking about a piece of a pancake. That was during maybe? Vitamania, by the way. What kind of conversation led to that? I don't know. We talk about some dumb stuff in here. What are we doing with our lives, guys? <laughs> and last and not least, and I'm just going to say this was probably Ryan. 15, I've been feeling brawn. No, that's me. That's me. Uh, I feel like even though Keith definitely is in love with Braun, that the way that it's said is something I would say, because I, I feel like I say feeling in I, that I, context I, a lot. So I will agree with Juan and say myself. Day. Okay, so Still let's feel find me. out. And this was number 15, and number 15 is Ryan. Episode oh, okay. 192, while discussing the episode that you guys genuinely cared about, Ryan said this was a memorable line. Ryan, no, Ryan said this memorable line. I read that terribly. So you said that in episode 192, man. So there's a bonus thing. Uh, I, I think he expected us to keep track of score. We have not. Uh, <laughs> but he put a tiebreaker in it's here. It's like, whose line is it anyway? Exactly. The points, the points really don't matter. Don't matter. Now for the question. We go back to episode 17. Yes, that's right. I'm bringing up episode 17. We saw the debut of the infamous segment known as Fanfic Fantasies. Aww. So the question is, how long in minutes and seconds was the Fanfic Fantasies segment? So for those that don't know, Fanfic Fantasies was easily the worst idea we have ever had in the history of ever. You're I came up with this. Yeah. Oddly enough, people people think I came up with this. I don't know why. It's it's your brand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, how long do you guys think that lasted? And I'm going to say like 10 minutes. Yeah, I have no idea cuz I walked away I'm gonna in say like it three. was about 20 minutes long. So like I'm going to say 20 My god. 22 minutes. Jeebus. Okay, so if I If I have 10. to guess, are we going with uh prices right rules? Don't go, don't go 20, don't go 11 on me. I'm <laughs> fine. I'll say 14. Okay. The answer is, oh, Keith won. 17 minutes and 29 seconds. So you're closest without going over, right. my friend. And I walked away for that. That was easily one of the worst things we have ever done in history, folks. Uh, it was too. really painful. <laughs> um, so inevitably, there are some great things. That we have done in this podcast. We've, we've been very proud of many of these things. And I swear this was not intentional. You know that fanfic fantasy segment that uh, True Prince has brought up? Yes. Fanfic fantasy. Fanfic fantasy. Fantasy. Folks, here we go. We're about to give you a sample of the magic that was fanfic fantasies, a thing so bad it ended over 150 episodes ago. So, Ryan, take over for me. I can't believe I'm doing this again. A lot has changed since the last time I read this. Lower but your voice, this is Ryan, on Ryan, uh, Ryan, you gotta... <clears throat> fanfiction.net, and it's titled I Love You, Dean Ambrose. Ryan, and get the sexy voice. Do the sexy voice. I love you, Dean Ambrose. There we go. And it's by... No, that's they actually sexy changed boy. their name. It used to be Hardy Boys Fan 1994, but now it's uh, Roman Reigns Empire. They, oh, they, changed, they done changed their name. <laughs> it's I Love You, Dean Ambrose. This Ryan. is a slash story between Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. Ryan, you Disclaimer. forgot to link us to the story. You forgot to link us. We can't read what we don't have. Oh, let let me... Slowly link it in, man. This, this is this is exactly yeah. Why we stopped doing this? Click folks. that link. Oh, click that link. All right, I won't go any further than that. Okay, please don't. Please don't. So, the disclaimer on this fan fiction: I do not own the Shield or WWE. We got to make that clear because that could have been, you know, a misconception. <laughs> Yeah, thank, we don't own the shield, guys. <laughs> Here we go. Aww. Dean Ambrose is not known for good relationships with girls or the divas backstage. Hey, we've moved on from divas. Superstars. Seth Rollins, on the other hand, is known for his charm with the ladies. Seth Rollins hasn't told anybody or his teammates, but Seth is... Bi and is in love with Dean. <laughs> but Dean is also bi and is in love with Seth. 
Dean and Seth are afraid of admitting their feelings for each other. Their other teammate, Roman Reigns, knows about their feelings for each other and tries to get them to admit their feelings. I feelings. can't do it. Feelings. I can't do it. Seth <laughs> comes up with a plan and, admit- and admitting his feelings for Dean. Dean starts getting letters and flowers from a secret admirer who turns out to be Seth. Uh-oh. It was a late Monday night, two hours after Raw had ended, which is like two in the morning at this rate. Most of the wrestlers have left the arena. Seth was sitting in the Shields locker room while Dean was taking a shower. Dean had already packed his stuff and was holding a letter for Dean. <laughs> Seth <laughs> looked Seth over at Dean's bag and saw Randy Orton's shit. I mean, Dean's <laughs> bag and back at the letter without hesitation. Seth walks over and puts the letter in Dean's bag smiling. He picks up his bag and walks out. 30 minutes later, Dean walks out of the shower and over to his bag and sees a letter. Seth put in his bag. Now he put in his bag. No, he picks up and opens it. All right. That, that was the intro. Do we even go any further? I think that was enough. Come on, let, let's let's at least give a little sample of the characters. Just just, just jump to some of the gi- the dialogue. Let's see. I, I re- you know it gets real bad. <laughs> uh, I think that's enough. Okay, folks. We'll put it in the description if you want to read it. Yeah, if you guys, if you guys want to listen to fanfic fantasies, uh, we actually did this for quite a while, and that was in episode seventeen. Episode seventeen. We are in episode two hundred. We have become adults, adults that make smarter arguably. decisions. Arguably, yes, arguably. I don't know. Judging by that last segment, <laughs> the adults thing is questionable. Basically, if uh, you listen to the question, the answer to the previous question, imagine seventeen minutes of that torture. We were literally like Keith and I were sweating. I was sweating cold. Like I, w- I felt so uncomfortable. Not really Keith hot left. and heavy. I walked away because I just didn't want to do this anymore. Like to this day, it's and easy. And then I when... went and what? I ate pepperoni afterwards. Take that as you will. <laughs> like okay. in full stick form. Uh yeah. Why not? Makes Why sense. not? But yeah, uh, folks, you know. You make some good things, you make some bad things. The good thing is like, you know, as a podcast, we've we've learned, right, to to fix some things. But also remember, you can send us questions every single week by going to Twitter, bite that cast. You can use the hashtag AskBT. You can send if you're still listening, thank you. You can go to bite that cast at gmail.com or if you are listening to us on YouTube, which is going to be live starting next week. You can simply drop a comment on this episode. Now, because this is a special episode, we didn't take in a lot of questions, but we did get a couple of them uh, that are more about us, that are more about Bite That. So we got three of them down below. So Keith, uh, take the fir- take the second and third one. I'll take the, for obvious reasons, I'll, I'll yeah, take the, last, say, the first one. That yeah. first one, I won't touch that with a 10-foot pole. But all right. Our first question comes in from Sam H., who asks... Congrats, dudes. Gotta say, I loved the GM stream, even though it was a bit like torture. You're telling me, buddy. (laughs) What has been your favorite moment of the last 200 episodes? It's a hard question, but I know you can do it. I can tell you what wasn't, and we just did it like three minutes ago. Yeah, drag that old horse out. I I have an answer if uh, if you guys need to think. Easily, my favorite thing that we've done uh, in podcast form are the are the BT awards from last year when we uh, transitioned that from uh, the biteys where we would just kind of present it and then uh, turned it into more a discussion based thing. That's uh, that's something that I wanted to do for a while, and then I just kind of said, "F it, this is how we're doing it this year," and uh, made it made it into a thing and. I'm very proud of that, and it's uh, something that I really want to continue doing going forward. So easily my favorite thing that we've done. Uh, For me, I would have to say podcast-wise, definitely looking back to even episode 100, uh, the game that True Prince did the first time that we did that, and and this was, you know, just as special too this time around, uh, 
when True Prince did that and showed really that dedication and, you know, to, to actually go back through our archives and make that cool game that was a fun experience for all of us to kind of take a look back at the first couple years of Bite That was one of my favorite things that we've ever done. Also, the poetry contest we did a couple years ago, the SummerSlam poetry, when uh, the three of us all got to read our own poems um, and then read uh, the ones that the audience submitted. I thought that was a good time. And then outside of the podcast, probably my favorite bite that moment ever was actually when we did the live fight night season finale. And that we, we streamed the entire series of fight night and then capped it off with the premiere of the final episode and just got to see a live reaction for the the fight night galaxy, if you will. So that was my all time favorite bite that moment. And, you know, some great podcast moments as well. Yeah, for me, uh, regarding the podcast itself, it probably had to be bite that 100 just because the whole experience around it. I remember waking up in that morning and, you know, we were getting like tweets. We got a couple of emails saying people like, hey, congratulations, you know, I'm from the Netherlands. I'm from Australia. And, you know, we got people from Saudi Arabia uh, sending us uh, private messages. And it's awesome. You know, like uh, I always bring it up. You know, I, I remember like the first couple of po- podcast episodes, we get like five listeners because it's not exactly easy. You know, how do you grow a podcast audience? I think that's something that every podcast or any, you know, entertainment form struggles with just getting started yeah exactly like yeah. once you get that ball rolling it, it's not easier but you at least know who you're speaking to but when you're not speaking to anybody at the beginning and then seeing 100 episodes in people you know referencing like chad and gable like all that stuff with that true prince mentioned we get tweets about that we still get uh, tweets about bear facts like when keith had to like uh, move at some point he got attacked it's like you know, bears happened. Those outrageous things. I barely survived. <laughs> oh. Oh. And, dun, 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 dun. and uh, some of the random questions that we get, like last week, was probably one of my favorite moments uh, in Bite That History. Like the French fry question, which I believe came from True Prince, right? I think it did. I believe so, I believe yeah. So. I, I, I put out that picture on the Twitter, on the Twitter, and then uh, True Prince asked us, the question and it became a, quite a hot debate. Exactly. Yeah, and you made it a hot like, line. He made so it a hot many song. Private messages. What I was going to say is that you don't know what's going to like click with people. You know, like there's so we have these heated podcast discussions about heel or baby face, but here we were getting so many tweets, so many emails about French fries. Right? Like even though we're a wrestling podcast, because we've developed this community. It's like we all like wrestling, but we also like other things, right? And the other thing, it had to be, and uh, Barnabas has mentioned this in the past, who's a longtime supporter of Fight Night. Like that interview that I did with Keith was one of the most well, that enjoyable was hilarious. things. Like, that was real dumb. <laughs> just trying to like not laugh and working on Fight Night as a whole. Like Fight Night had easily the smallest audience, you know, being honest about anything that we did. But the reward was so real. Like I could play, I could hit play on an episode and feel like, we created something, right? Like Ryan and I really worked hand in hand with that. And we it's saw a small, a positive but passionate result. audience. Yeah. We still get questions about that. So Pamela, shout out on you on YouTube. All right. That was, that was a nice little trip down memory lane. So thank you for the question. Our next one comes in from Emlyn K who asks, what do you guys do for fun? That's not wrestling related. And also what do you guys do for a living? So I can take it first if you want. Um, sure. Sure. What do I do for a living? Uh, I I do a lot of stuff. I do a lot of traveling. Uh, I do a lot of mental health work. And uh, I do a lot of speaking arrangements. And the podcast has li- literally helped me in my professional career. A lot of times, like, I try to bring this personality elsewhere because, you know, pe- like, a lot, a lot of public presentations suck. They just suck. They're boring. They're dull as hell. And I don't like that. What I uh, do for fun, I mean, obviously, I play a lot of games. Like, I've been playing a lot of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I got my second chicken dinner last night. Freak. Congrats, yes. dude. That was Woo. so satisfying. I got to start playing. Yes, we got to do something with that. And uh, listen to a lot of music on the road. I love listening to podcasts. Uh, I love the combination of doing DDP yoga while watching something on the network. Like, that to me is like a super hobby. Uh, so, those are some of the things I like doing. Oh, and baking. Like, just before the podcast, I, re- I baked a mango cake. And it was freaking delicious. God, that sounds good. It's so good. So what do I do for fun? 
uh, definitely play games, big gamer. And also, I mean, this is really doing bite that stuff is also really part of that. I mean, we dedicate many days of the week to watching wrestling and, and doing stuff for bite that. So that is a, it's a huge part of my life. Uh, as for uh, a living, uh, I work in marketing for a small company. Uh, so, so that is what I do. And, and that definitely, uh, the, you know, doing my current job as well as bite that stuff, they kind of complement each other. Things I learn from bite that I can take to my job and things from my job I can take to bite that. So it, it's definitely kind of cool to have my own, you know, learning marketing from the ground up with, with bite that as well as, you know, coming into a company and seeing what you can do to help that company grow. It's, it's very interesting and a fun learning experience. Nice. And for myself, uh, I like, I'm, I'm a big gamer as well. I think that's like, uh, the common thread between the three of us. We're all big gamers. And when we're, uh, when we're not talking or watching wrestling, we're, uh, usually playing video games and I'm no different. I, uh, do that. I spend a lot of time in the gym, getting, getting, working on my gains. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, just living the dream. Getting, I'm doing a lot of cooking recently. I've been uh, doing a lot of experimenting with cooking, and I'm very much enjoying that. Like I oh, learned, yeah. I learned a fancy little trick. I'll share this one for free. If you're making a stir fry, put in a teaspoon of coconut oil. It'll change the entire game. Oh yeah, so I do good. that with my rice. It's so like it's, so, it's got like it's this so slight, good. sweet taste, right? Yeah, it's so good. Hashtag and then, uh, game changer. Exactly. It, that is hashtag game changer and what i do for a living i'm uh i'm a writer because uh, I'm, I'm good with my writing words and uh i work in uh, i work in enter the entertainment business as a writer and uh yeah it's uh it helps it's another it's another situation where it really contributes to bite that because he's you, not uh, on the creative team folks don't worry exactly i'm not on the wwe creative team and uh don't have those insides, but it's another situation where it really helps uh, accentuate bite that because you learn things at your day job that you can bring towards the podcast and then learning these uh, by like running the podcast ourselves. It's that there are things that you learn uh, there that you can bring towards your day job and get better with that. And it's uh, they really complement each other. Well, the writer yeah. that doesn't have a Twitter and I'll, I'll be taking over uh, this question here. Uh, who, that comes from Pietro C. Uh, so it's t episode 200. I haven't spoken in Spanish for a while, so I'll read in Spanish and I'll paraphrase you in get English. A, you get a buy. You get a buy. <clears throat> Let me get ready here. And he uh, he says, Saludos este Chile. Mi nombre es Pie Pietro y quiero felicitarlos por los 200 gloriosos episodios del mejor podcast de la lucha libre. Mi pregunta es, dado el acalorado debate de la semana pasada sobre las patatas fritas, ¿Cuál es la mejor hamburguesa? Les mando la versión de la hamburguesa, Juan. Muchas felicitaciones nuevamente y que sigan por 200 episodios más. Saludos. So, in Chile, they actually have a burger that is named Juan. And uh, sort of as a follow-up wow. to last week's debate, it's got to be delicious. Uh, following up to last week's French fry debate, what is the best kind of burger? Because, like, the, the fries are cool, but the fries are nothing without the burger. For me. Could be wrong here. Yeah, that's legit. I mean, you don't know the wonder that is poutine, so I could see why you. Would, we have something uh, take very similar. Fence. We have something incredibly similar. We have uh, las papas loca. Ah, loca. All right, poutine. Poutine sounds way better than papa loca. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but like, okay, do we need to have bacon in order to have the best burger? No, not necessarily. That's the thing is it's it's harder to define like oh this is the optimal burger because it's really yeah it, it's it's harder to tell okay, uh, exactly okay. because Wait. with a, with a fry you're getting a a stick of potato but with burger you can you have different options like are we gonna are we talking about like a ground beef burger chicken burger are well, we doing I mean, that speaking or more about like okay do you have just a traditional burger. A bacon cheeseburger? Are you going to have one that has like onion rings and barbecue sauce on it? Uh, like mm -hmm. People kind of go crazy with some of the different ones. Like if you take a piece of steak and put it in 
between two buns is that a burger no, okay how about not this? really and it'd be very difficult to eat let's establish it's like a grammar bad. let's talk about then the basic elements of a burger so it's usually like right like ground beef there's maybe some cheese and the bun like those three things first like do you guys like a a thick burger because like you know there's like three ounce six ounce nine ounce like some people like uh double cheeseburgers but people some people like the wendy's you know like thin a uh, hamburger uh like the the meat itself do you guys like some thick meat it, uh, or some? It all depends. Thick meat? It, it all depends what I'm going for there. Like if I want to, if I'm going, it's it comes down to either quantity or quality for me. Like sometimes I want to eat a a nice burger and I'll get like a nice thick juicy burger, like with you mentioned some cheese, some veggies on there. It's nice and saucy. It's kind of messy, oh. but then so, sometimes you just want quantity. Like you don't care if it's good. And that's where like a McDonald's cheeseburger or a double cheeseburger comes into play. Like it's it's awful and it's thin, but it's so good. <laughs> Especially awful, like thin let's and say so good. awful, thin and so good. Like yeah, a I great don't... time for a McDonald's cheeseburger is let's say when you're hammered coming home from the bar at three thirty in the morning and you stop in and get fifteen of them. <laughs> it's a good time. Yeah, I don't know if I'm a big fan of like the huge like stacked burgers because they're a lot harder to eat whereas you know a, a, a smaller to medium sized patty and i do like you know some people hate mayonnaise and stuff but sometimes even if like the mayo and the ketchup on a burger can be really yeah. good or like thousand island dressing whatever the secret ingredient is that mcdonald's and burger king chemical x due to their burgers but yeah. i've uh i recently bought like a sriracha mayo and it goes amazing on burgers. Huh. It's so good. There's so like aioli. Now. Yeah, there's garlic aioli. Add garlic to anything. But okay, if you had to choose between fast food burger or restaurant burger, let's say like a, like a famous Dave's and upwards, right? Like an establishment versus fast food. Which one do you guys care about more? Like on a, on a day to day basis? Yeah, restaurant burger. But I would choose like a homemade on the grill burger above both of those eh, by uh by sometimes a, a restaurant kind of goes above and beyond with the sauce or whatever they put on it so the, i i trust Ooh. them to do a better job with a burger than i would and yeah. uh medium cooked by the way and i'm you, gonna oh, yeah. and i'm gonna say that one's on you <laughs> for like, trusting the it restaurant is. Well, so maybe if i looked up more recipes then i could i could do it i think i have the ability it's just i'm lazy keith are you a medium guy as well yeah, like my average burger, but I'm not above – like if if I were just to sit down and have a burger, it would be a medium burger. But if I'm in the mood for a large burger, which is not always, but sometimes I am, I'll go have a large burger. Same well, thing like with the small burger. Wise, yeah, like cook medium wise. well done. Oh, um, I'm medium rare with all of my okay. red meat. I like that um, – I like a little bit of blood oh. in my meat, you know, just – it See, I always you, cook it a little more well alive. done at home because I'm afraid I'm going to like make myself sick or something by not cooking it enough. It's the thrill but of at the a hunt, restaurant, baby. I'll get medium. It's the thrill of the hunt. You got to taste that blood knowing that even though you didn't kill it, somebody else did. And that was once a living thing and you are feasting on what's left of it. And there's the quote for episode 300 for the game. <laughs> <laughs> what I will say is that I, I had a burger today in Chili's. As a matter of fact, I almost tweeted out, I can never look at fries again without thinking of episode 199. <laughs> Damn it. And uh, like that only costs seven bucks. Like Wendy's, I don't know how it is in the States or do does Canada have Wendy's? Yep, we have Wendy's. Like a combo is around eight Big bucks. It's like seven or eight bucks. I'm like, it's cheaper to get a better burger at Chili's than it is to go to a fast food chain at some points. Like the price difference oh, totally. is not nearly as much as it was, you know, like a couple of years ago where you get a, you could get a burger for like two bucks. Like you can do that at McDonald's. It's a convenience for, tax. Yeah. Because you can, you can walk away with a burger in five minutes at Wendy's. That's why it costs more. Yeah, I, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. I'm so hungry, guys. We need oh, to yeah. yeah, me this. too. I, I ate before <laughs> this, but, you know, hopefully, I'm just going to say this, between now and episode 300, I want us to have some kind of table for three where we're just eating a shit ton of fries. Just a shit ton of fries, thanks to the bike uh, We all just sounds... order a different thing of fries. Yeah. 
You know what? We actually do that. A table for it's gonna three. happen down the line, though. I just started my diet. No, yeah, we, dude, we got a hundred episodes. We got a hundred. Yeah, well, that's true. Well, we got ninety nine technically. So let's do that. Sometime in the next two years, you can have a cheat day. Yeah, <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah, just not anytime soon. I, I can't go off the wagon yet. And a uh, bike club. Before we go on any further with uh, the other celebrations for bite that two hundred, you know. In preparation of episode 200, we announced the giveaway uh, for a $25. I need to order dollar. food now. Yeah. So you do what you need to yeah, do. Yeah, you go ahead, man. You go ahead. But uh, we announced the giveaway for a $25 Amazon gift card. All you had to do was drop a review of the show, an honest, genuine review on Apple Podcast or Stitcher. And uh, we got a lot of entries, you know, and these reviews meant a lot to us. Like some of you went out of your way, like all of you pretty much, to really let us know how... How bite that impacted you, not just in like the wrestling discussion levels. I mean, we've been talking about burgers for the past five minutes, but as a community, right? So uh, without further ado, I'm going to take it over to Ryan, who's going to announce the winner of the giveaway. And we'll be in contact with you uh, within the next 48 hours or so. So you can get yourself uh, the gift card. So, yeah, the winner for the uh, $25 Amazon gift card is Jarrett Qualls. So congratulations, sir. Ooh. Uh, hit us up on Twitter or send us an email. We can get your information so that we can send you over that $25 gift card. Yeah. Thank you, everyone who participated, and congratulations. Yeah, he's actually a longtime listener, so thank you guys so much. And keep dropping those reviews. If you want to support us directly, you know, you can go to Apple Podcasts. You can drop those reviews. There's a lot of podcasts out there, right? So that is the yeah. best way that you can help us think, climb up uh, those ranks. Jared is the only one confirmed to have listened to every single episode. Yeah, I there remember. There could be others out there. Yeah, if there's but, anybody uh, else. Like, I remember he sent us a DM and uh, told us, like, binge watching. I'm like, oh, boy, that's those first couple of yeah, episodes. Yeah, it gets a little rough that in is, the early days. Honestly, that is the craziest thing to me. Like, I, that's the thing that is so far-fetched where I can't believe people do that like i know it happens and i'm very appreciative that it does that's thank a lot you to of everybody keys. that's gone back and listened uh, listen to the archive but it's oh it's crazy to me all right i'm going back to ordering my food well i you think i'm gonna that. get a burger you know we got 200 episodes so i figured like what what is the best way that we can sort of give a shout out to those people that you know have either sent us an email, sent us a question, sent us a tweet, and integra uh, in integrated us. What like interacted with us on Instagram? I embedded both words together. So two hundred episodes, two hundred shout outs. So Keith, I know you're not. I mean, you're here, but you're ordering your food, Ryan. I'm gonna need your your energy because I am about to shout out two hundred people on the spot. Am I ready for this? I'm sharing my energy with you, Juan. Thank you. Thank you. You, you, you can have do my it. energy. Don't forget to breathe in between, okay? Take well, some uh, breaths. Before you start, is five guys any good? I've never had five guys. It's greasy, but it's good. It's greasy. All right. You're going to have five guys all over you, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get their hot dogs in my mouth. And we're going to be talking about the shout outs right now. So uh, give, me, give me a countdown, Ryan. Five, four. Three, two, one, go. Academy of Sarcastic Responses. Ajay Radna, Al Ramos Jr., Alex Servino, Omir Warwar, Andrew Alexander, Angie C85, Anthony Howard, Ashley Hudson, Barney Johnson, Bearfax, Benjamin Ray Shower, Bo Segris, Brett Clark, Brian Cameron, Brocast Podcast, Bullet Club vs. The Shield, that's a person, Kane Yo-Yo, Caleb Habrick, Cam Bierman, Carlos Alvarado, Carlos Andrews, Caroline Helen, Champa, Chris Ariema, Chris Bako, Chris Kaufman, Chris McNulty, Kobe Cantrell, Cody Collier, Cody Eaton, Collector 9000, Copyright Devon, Cynical Cypher, Delone Joker, Damien Sprenger, Danny K, Dave Riding, David Acosta, Dennis Guinta, Derek Wilson, DFGTV, Dillith Nimalsiri, DJ Threat, Doe573, Dominic Diaz, Draven Glasgow, Echo Waltz, Edward Enright, Ella Bridget, Element Kordovic, Elstein Erico, Eric Martinez, Felix XRS, Fernando Diaz. First name terms. 
French fries, fresh toast, Gary Cameron, Gary Patman, Gene DeMann, Jitsu85, Gunning For You, Hack Liva, Hom Solo, where you at? Hom Bay Sama, Harley Rose, Harry Kearns, Herman Robles, Indy M. Miller, Irish T. Raw, Aseya Washi, It's Steve Now, Jack Amundsen, Jack Lido, Jack C., Jacob Grandi, Jacob Slayer, James Lima, James Smith, Jerob J. Bo, Jarek Wells, congratulations, buddy, uh, Jason Zuckers. I hope I said that right. Uh, Javier Rosado, Jeff Dino from Pro Wrestling Loot, Jerry DePont, uh, Gina Vega, Joe Windinglin, Joey Lomenzo, John Sexton, John Milsha, Jordan WS, Joseph Graham, Joseph Gomolo, JTG, how you doing, man? Pick up the phone. Justin Boannon, K Dog 31619, Kev Griffin, Kevin Dunlap, Kevin LaFleur, Kissred Studios, Nightlife HD, Kyle Kelly, Kyle Steven, Leon Got X, Liam Vincent, Lily Rose Capenian, Lucas W. Hippie, Marco Schmidt, Matt Men Podcast, Matthew Mutton, Matthew Zeller, Max Corp One, Mike Asio, and Mike Wiley, MJG uh, Chick, uh, Mobbed on YouTube, Monica Guido, Mr. Beautiful 323, Mr. Rocker 22, Nancy Lopez, Nathan, Nathan Spradlin, Nathaniel Grimstone, Nick Morris, happy birthday, buddy, Nick Saffel, Nicole Tirado, Nightmare Music, Nico Bellic from Russia, Nivel Escondido, Noah Rundle, NR Gaming, OK Fabe, Oliver Sandtract, Overcooked Bacon, Pack Leader 1215, Pamela Jaffray, Fight Night, Paul Lobin, Peter D331, Philly the Heartbroke Kid, Philly Chili Evans, uh, Pietro Caretti, Press Pause TV, Princess Breezy, Promo Neo, Pro Wrestling Loot, Rajiv Singh, Ramon Triff, Reiko Aozoki, Riley Brock, Roach McPoach, RPG Cater, Ryan Davis, Safe 7300, Saqib Arain, hopefully I said that right, Sam Hara, uh, Sashmila, Saur- Saurab Kame, Shanky, Sharon Mitchell, Simon Dean, Skills, Saleadex, Star 5 WWE, Steel Share Magazine, Stephen Reed, Sushin Sharma, Talking Benson, T Krebs, Terrence Jordan, That Owens Fan, That Wrestling Club, The Diva Bible WWE, The Savior WWE, This Is Alarm, Tippa, Tiffany Trim, Tim Brennan, Tim Vicious, TMK Martin, TMK Plays, Jeep is this name. Tom M763. Three zero five two four. Oh, not a lot of na- late names like that, thankfully. Uh, Tony Meyer, Tortoise V Toys, Town Nation, Travis Hayes, True Prince of Pro. Shout out to you, buddy. Ty Boogie, Tyler Edwards, Tyler Kinder, USC Punk, Viggs, Vikash Pratap, What a Maneuver, Whichever Seventeen, Wiggy Music, Will Light Towers, Wizard of Gore, Wolves. One nine eight six one wrestling with subtitles. Yachita Santiago and Zany ninety five. I Whoa. did it. Two hundred shout outs. Wow! My and God! Can, can I can I give a can I give a special shout out quick? <sighs> what? I want to give a special shout out to you guys, Juan and Ryan, for being uh, for being here and doing two hundred of these with me and uh, and not getting sick and tired of my antics. So. Thank you, guys. I love you. You're welcome. It was a chore, but we're here. Yeah, man. We we managed. I, I didn't <laughs> say it would be easy. No, but yeah, like above everything, you know, it's crazy. We've done 200 episodes of this podcast. I never, never thought. Realistically, like I remember the first thing we said when we sat down and said like, hey, let's do like the show thing is, are we going to commit to it? I think commitment is like the the thing everybody's most afraid of. Like I remember even by like episode 10, we were kind of going, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) we were kind of going like, are we going to keep doing this? Let's keep on shrugging. I remember like when we were writing the documents, like Ryan, show personality. Ryan, for the love of God, stop saying, um, like we would have to write all these things and uh, we've grown. We've grown a lot, right? Yeah, we certainly uh, have. We've grown. I, uh, was that you, one that posted uh, on social media earlier today, the the clip of episode zero? Yeah, episode zero. Yeah, I did that. That was tough. That was real Ooh, tough to listen to. I didn't to. dare listen. From episode it's, one, it's Keith has always been the guy. Like, even in episode one, I'm like, and Keith, okay, episode zero, that, that never even aired, thankfully. Uh, I even say, like, eh, there's Keith Pusher from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And then you guys do your thing. And, oh, boy. We it's tough. Yeah, <laughs> that was we've uh, we've grown. 
hopefully we've uh, gotten a little better at this. But it's fun. Like, uh, I'm really looking forward, you know, sort of closing up shop here, talking about the Bite That weekly update. You know, the first thing, and I know, Ryan, you're going to be talking about that right now, is that, I mean, this is it. Like, this is the last time, you know, for audio listeners, like, maybe it's not a, like, like a big change, but it is for us. Because, like, psychologically, emotionally speaking, starting next week, it's like it's, we're starting over. And I think that anything you know, in the world of entertainment, like a product, you know, the way like a product changes, like right now, I'm just going to say it, the theme song that we've been using for the past couple of years, it's going to retire folks. We, you know, thanks to our Patreon supporters, we got new, th- new music for intro, for outro, or we got new graphics. The logo is going to stay the same because that's the one that everybody, you know, really recognizes. Knows and loves. Yeah. So uh, how do you guys feel about that? You know, some changes are going to be happening and 201, the new beginning. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're taking it up to a new level. We got to have a new look and feel. And, you know, thanks to everyone's support, we're, we're able to take Bite That to new heights. We're going to make Bite That history, guys. Make Bite we're gonna That make Great bite Again. We're going to make Bite That Great Again. Yeah. <laughs> right? But, I mean, change is scary, but it's also exciting. And I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it, shaking things up and seeing, uh, seeing how everything goes. And, uh Please let us know next week uh, what you guys think. And if there's any, if we change a little too much, you want to see more change, whatever, uh, whatever you guys, uh, whatever you guys think, because we do this for you at the end of the day. Yeah. One of the things that we're really thankful for is the the patrons, you know, like uh, right now, a lot of this, like the music, all this stuff, you know, that was pocketed thanks to the, the support we get on patrons. So, a lot of my equipment, my new equipment. Yeah. Ryan's got a new microphone. He's got a new microphone uh, uh, boom arm just so it's way more comfortable. I, I know that sometimes maybe you guys heard Ryan's desk. Hopefully that is never the case again. But yeah, all of that is thanks to the patrons. So, Ryan, if you could sort of go over some of the changes that we went through that, that'd be awesome. So yeah, if you head over to Patreon.com, you'll see a lot of uh, by changes that, there. By that. Yes, Patreon.com <laughs> yeah, no, slash by that. Well, they, <laughs> Patreon did change their layout too, so they had some yeah. changes themselves. That's a good um, point. But yeah, you're going to see that we, we, we kind of fine-tune things. I kind of went over this a little bit last week, and you would notice before on the perks that we kind of we took away that... Uh, the raw and uncut video version that's because we're going live now so now everyone can see the video version of course patrons will still get that uh they'll get the first look at that bt show weekly so that's still kind of exclusive for them and as i mentioned before you know now we're gonna start doing i think you know either late july early august most likely we got bite that plus coming that second audio feed so all the reviews debate that's srt content like that when it comes out now will be on that secondary feed and then we're going to do private shows for our patrons as well they're going to get kind of an exclusive live hangout so a lot of a lot more live experiences now that we're going to be able to do so those will be live kind of podcast format shows where we talk about whatever if there's something of wrestling we didn't cover and we wanted to talk about we can interact with them talk about that or off topic things or take questions in the chat it's a very open format with those private shows so tons of cool stuff over on our Patreon. And we changed our goals around. You know, we did hit that $100 goal, uh, but we were going to do those things anyway because our new direction is if we hit a goal, we're going to do a celebratory event instead. And if there's any features that we want to just do weekly, we're just going to do them. So that, you know, this is kind of the new layout for Bite That. So the goals are all about, hey, if we get here, like the the one coming up, if we get to 150, I'm going to sing a, a theme song. If you saw my uh, Tyler Breeze video, Oof. I'm going to embarrass myself again. And then, uh, you know, 500, we might have some goals in between there, but we're going to do a 24-hour stream. We did the 12-hour stream before. We're going to do a 24-hour anything goes stream. So things like that are the new goals. And the content is just going to come at whatever level you choose on the Patreon site. Yeah, and uh, as a matter of fact, the past two weeks, the patrons, and right now I'm writing to a couple of on YouTube, they've been treated to a live podcast because we want the patrons to be almost like executive producers or producers of the show. Like, hey, we're going to be doing this. So when we reached out, we said, hey, 
we're going to do the podcast live for you guys so we get your feedback. So they've been seeing the new music, the new graphics, the new everything. And, uh, you know, if anybody's been keeping an eye on what's happening on YouTube, what's happening on entertainment as a whole, we strongly believe the crowdfunding is the way to go. So, you know, this is not begging. This is not saying, hey, you know, please do this. But if you do care about the show, you know, you can support us uh, by going to buy that.com. You can make a donation, even one dollar, like whatever it is that you want to uh, donate. Um, you know, right now, another uh, thing you didn't mention is that we have a Patreon Discord channel. So right now, if you're a patron at one dollar or above, even if for, you're there for just one month, you get lifetime access to a Patreon Discord. So there we just talk about games. We talk about everything like uh you know we've been talking during raw with some of the patrons just talking about the the end zone cast thing it's just we want to build up the the bike club in a way that as i've mentioned time and time again we don't want to do this for one year we want to be doing uh you know as much as we can so seriously whether you're listening on apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening if you want to give us feedback this episode right now this is the time to do it we did a lot of things that we used to do back in the day on this episode and uh, let us know like, hey, you know, going on from 201, you should give this a shot. Maybe it sucks and we don't do it again, but maybe it works, right? So please let us know by either commenting on YouTube, send us an email, uh, bitethatcast at gmail.com, send us a tweet, bite that cast. You can DM us on uh, Facebook, uh, bite that cast as well. And all of those things, we'll make sure to read them. You know, now the debate that's all that stuff is going to be, be available for everybody. So how can and we make that content better for you. And these are not the only changes that we're doing. These are the only ones that we're announcing right now because like what Ryan mentioned, like we're not going to say something until we're going to do it. We said we're going to go live when next week. We're not going to stall for a month, right? Like that's exactly why we did that. And Keith, 205 Live, buddy, sorry. Like just... I mean, I, I, I'm with you and I understand, but for the lulls, it seemed like yeah. the right idea. And one thing we should say, we should probably mention, uh, so look for us around 7 p.m. Wednesdays to go live. We didn't mention the time, yeah. so 7 oh, yeah. p.m. Eastern time is going to be right approximate time that we're going to go live, so always try and tune in around that time. And I'm sure we'll promote the who hum diddly yes, of it yeah, for the we'll, next week. We'll be week, promoting so. it on Twitter and stuff. I just realized we hadn't mentioned that starting time. It's, it's kind of important, right? Yeah. Yeah. Details, details. And, and uh, just uh, as a closing thing, as I mentioned, we're doing this live right now with the patrons. If you guys have any, if you look at the features at patreon.com slash by that, and there's something that you think we should consider adding as a, like a, another tier or part of a tier or something, same thing, you know, please let us know. So folks, uh, we're going to close it off for those on Apple Podcast and uh, most places right now. Listen to the music for one more time and uh, start to say goodbye to it because uh, Ryan... All right, say, say goodbye, buddy. Keith, say goodbye, buddy. Next week. See you later. Goodbye, Thank you buddy. guys for listening. We'll see you next week. Live. I ordered a bacon cheeseburger. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Was it good? It was real good. I don't know. I haven't eaten it. Ketchup? There Onions, guys. mayo? Uh, Onions. Onions.